Before the space shuttle, spacecraft like this Apollo capsule are built for no more than three astronauts. Landing in the ocean and recovered by aircraft carriers, the space capsule and the 360-foot rocket that launched it are never used again. When the shuttle rolls out of the factory in the 1970s, it is obvious that America has taken a huge leap in spacecraft design the largest, fastest winged hypersonic craft in history, the shuttle lands on a runway and can be refitted to fly again and again. It can hold up to seven astronauts and its payload bay can haul cargo to and from space. Space flight and how we conduct it changes radically with the shuttle concept. Well, you can imagine uh, the early spacecraft barely the size of a desk for one or two astronauts. Now the spacecraft is the size of an airliner and it has thousands of components and miles of wiring and we were making the transition from the era of wires and switches and meters to digital and computers. The shuttle's flexible design means it can carry out a variety of missions not possible before including scientific and astronomical missions. NASA needs a new breed of astronauts, not just flyers, but scientists, engineers, doctors, and other disciplines. A whole new world of opportunity opens up for astronaut candidates who may not have applied to NASA before the shuttle. In addition, a space program actively recruits women and minority astronauts for the first time. To get the word out, NASA asks for a little help from Hollywood. Hi, I'm Nichelle Nichols. Actress Nichelle Nichols is well known for her character, Lieutenant Uhura, on the science fiction television series, Star Trek. Now, she finds herself working for the real space program. I had the nerve to take NASA at, to task about there not being women in the space program and minorities flying out there, going where no man or woman has gone before and I came on board to recruit the first women and minority astronauts for NASA for the space shuttle program. It was an incredible time in my life, but it was highly successful because people thought, well, if Uhura is saying do it, do it. When the shuttle era, era started, that's when that really began. It, you know, we uh, obviously come from a plurality of backgrounds in our, in our country, and. And given the role of NASA, it, it really um, expresses the aspirations, I think, of everybody as a whole. The diversity of astronauts in the early shuttle program creates a precedence that continues for generations. America's first women astronauts also fly in the shuttle in the 1980s. Young girls across the nation are watching the missions, and for some, it sparks dreams about flying into space that eventually come true. I do remember watching shuttle launches, especially like in, it would have been the second, third grade time period when they're just starting to launch, and we were watching them at school. But I think it, it impacted me a lot, just in the fact that shortly thereafter, um, one of my first school art projects that my mom saved is a paper mache doll. It's an astronaut and I started thinking about space as a real place that girls could go. Through shuttle missions, women, minorities, scientists, doctors, people from all backgrounds and walks of life become a part of space history. It's, it's a very important legacy, I think, of, of the shuttle era. You know, we can look forward to, to that continuing legacy that when we send people off again in the future on these far-flung missions they're gonna look like you know what the planet Earth looks like with people from all different backgrounds and, and that's a good thing <laughs>